Welcome to the He's Got Issues Independent Comics Edition number 128.3. I'm John Cooney here to preview new independent comics being released July 2nd, 2014, beginning alphabetically with Boom Studios and Big Trouble in Little China number 2. Before, Jack Burton and Wang had to save Wang's kidnapped bride-to-be. Now Wang's the one who's been kidnapped and Jack Burton's back in action. Jack and Egg Shen travel through Chinatown's Black Road and the villains Jack faced before have something new on their mind. Revenge. Next we have Garfield number 27. As the summer heats up, Garfield and the gang keep it cool with two all new stories. First, a tall tale telling mouse stirs things up for Garfield Nodi, and then Garfield must solve a who done it, who stole his orange meringue pie. We've also got Robocop number one. A deadly and charismatic criminal, Killian, is released from jail. He went into the slammer before Robocop hit the streets. Now he wants to take out the biggest cop in the city. When OCP wants to take guns off the streets, Killian sees it as his opportunity to take on the former Alex Murphy. Next, we have Suicide Risk number 15. With Leo Winner's true past revealed, it's time to explore the origins of two of his closest, most fearsome allies, sisters Dive and Isa. In this special self-contained one-shot, Mike Carey is joined by fan-favorite Captain Marvel artist Philippe Andrade to explore the fracturous and terrifying world of the supervillain siblings. And we've got Woods number three. As the darkness of night falls, monsters begin to reveal themselves from both outside and inside the school. Maria struggles to break free of her false imprisonment before Coach Clay succeeds in instilling martial law and the exploratory crew finds themselves being hunted by unseen shadows. From Dark Horse Comics, we've got Angel and Faith Season 10, Number 4. Angel's taking some beatings in Magic Town while Faith is dishing them out, whether they're deserved or not. The two remain a world apart, dealing with a demonic rock god and a city preyed on by the magical powers exploding inside it. Next, we have Avatar The Last Airbender The Rift, Number 1, One for a Dollar Edition. Written and drawn by the team behind the best-selling The Promise and The Search, Jean Luen Yang and Gura Hiru, in collaboration with Airbender and Korra creators Michael Dante DiMartino and Brian Koritsko, this is the ultimate continuation of Avatar and the perfect companion to Legend of Korra. We've also got Michael Avon Alming's The Victories Number 13. The shadowy organization behind the downfall of the champions chooses Lady Dragon to meet the visitors, the makers of gods and champions. As she ascends the ranks, will she remember her original cause and the victories, or has she become an advisor? And we've got White Suits Number 4 of 4. The final pieces of the bloodstained puzzle fall into place to reveal the awful truth behind the white suit's reign of terror. The truth is all former suit Pirzak and FBI agent Sarah Anderson ever wanted, but it may be the last thing they ever get. From Dynamite Entertainment, we've got Black Bat number 12, final issue. In the final chapter to the story, the Black Bat is confronted by the unforeseen consequences of his vigilante quest for redemption. He comes face to face with the shadowy villain that has been pulling all the strings and must decide how far he's willing to go to save the city. Next, we have Chaos number 3 of 6. While the Chosen are under siege by zombie biker gang homicide and the Dead Ones, Evil Ernie makes his way to St. Louis in search of a man who may be the key to Armageddon. We've also got Dr. Spectre, Master of the Occult, number two. Nothing makes sense. Everything that Dr. Spectre has ever known is called into question, and I'll stop at nothing to uncover the secrets and the lies that hide beneath the surface of reality. Can the Master of the Occult overcome his fears and learn the unfathomable secret of the universe? Only the legendary Mark Wade and Neil Edwards can tell you. Next, we have Jim Butcher's The Dresden Files War Cry number two of six. The siege is on. Harry Dresden and his team of young wardens are trapped in an isolated house surrounded by hundreds of red court vampires. But are the vampires really after the Venatori Harry and company are there to save, or are they after a bigger prize? And if there's another reason for the red court's presence, why didn't the White Council tell their wardens? Harry has an entire night to discover the truth if he can keep his charges alive for the next 12 hours or so. This all-new pulse-pounding original story of the Dresden Files continues. We've also got New Vampirella number 2, continuing Dynamite's celebration of Vampirella's 45th anniversary. Upon learning of Vampirella being marked as a vessel for Lady Umbra, Demon Queen of the Shadows, her contacts in Cestus Day label her a threat and send an elite hit squad of monster killers, the Malus Malficarum, aka the Witch Hammer, led by an implacable Father Nicodemus, to dispose of her. With her world abruptly turned upside down, Vampirella finds herself unexpectedly allied with the strangest bedfellows imaginable. 
Next, we have Shadow, Midnight, and Moscow, number two of six. The streets of New York run red with criminal blood as the families of organized crime wage war on each other. The streets of London conceal an international conspiracy that may very well put an end to humanity, and Lamont Cranston, a.k.a. The Shadow, has retired. We've also got Six Million Dollar Man Season 6, number 4. We can rebuild him better than he was before. Better, stronger, faster. The Six Million Dollar Man is back with an original comic book continuation of the classic television series. Oliver Spencer has lost all control of Maskatron, and it may cost him and everyone in the OSI their lives. And amid the chaos and fear of alien infection, Steve is reunited with Jamie Summers, the bionic woman. Can even two bionic-powered agents stem the tide rising against humanity? Next, we have Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Echoes, number one of four. Sam Fisher, one of Splinter Cell, a clandestine operative operating in the shadows of the NSA, is now retired. His enemies, however, are not. Haunted by dreams and memories of his past, he struggles to put his life back together. But when a mysterious terrorist organization called Crow begins pursuing targets around the globe, Sam's expertise is needed to uncover their endgame and stop them before the deadly plot unfolds. Echoes takes place between the events of Splinter Cell Conviction and Splinter Cell Blacklist. The series bridges the gap between the two games with a realistic original story that sets the tone for the opening events in Splinter Cell Blacklist. From Nathan Edmondson, the acclaimed writer of Ultimate Iron Man, Who is Jake Ellis, and The Activity, and Mark Lamming, artist behind Exile on the Planet of the Apes, The Rinse, The Activity, and Dynamite's own King's Watch, comes a story of the Sam Fisher you only thought you knew. And we've got Twilight Zone number 6. Diana Clark has discovered she can see the future. There's a lot to be said for that power. A lot of ways you can make money, a lot of ways to protect yourself from harm, but when one of those visions involves a mushroom cloud rising over the city, Diana must choose between saving her own life and risking it all to save millions. From IDW Publishing, we've got Dexter's Laboratory number 44. Failing to stop his sister, Dexter has been captured by her royal guards and now faces punishment at the hands of Princess Dee Dee. As he struggles to endure her torment, can Dexter come up with one last-ditch plan to change their fates, or is he doomed to live the rest of his life without science? Next, we have Indestructible number 7. Barely escaping the super-illustrated photo shoot with her body parts and dignity intact, Stoner and Barry run into some unexpected trouble as they prep for the People's Choice Awards debut. Meanwhile, Art gets poked, June gets bounced, Kathy gets spurned, Nancy gets pissed, and the mysterious kidnapper, Tar, gets deadly serious. We've also got Lock and Key Crown of Shadows number 1, 100 Penny Press Edition. The bargain price debut issue of the beloved series continues here with this dollar comic presenting The Haunting of Key House, the first chapter of Crown of Shadows, the haunting third storyline in the Lock and Key saga. Next we have Rogue Trooper Classics number 3 of 12, Clone War, New Earth, a planet ravaged by war, its atmosphere poisoned by chemical weapons. In this battle-scarred landscape, the Norts and Southers fight where only the genetic infantrymen can survive unaided. Rogue is one such soldier, and these are his tales, all in color for the very first time. We've also got Star Mage number 4 of 6. A few months after the dramatic cliffhanger in issue 3, Darian and his friends are forced to fend off Erasmus monsters while Arielos searches for the truth. Plus, what does Earth and Aaron King have to do with anything? And we've got Weird Love number 2. The first issue of Weird Love was a blazing buzz book, the hot gossipy talk of comic fans. Now right on the heels, the high heels, of the controversial comic is the second stupefying issue of 1950s and beyond kinky classics. Weird Love number 2 leads off with the tawdry, torrid tale, Yes, I Was an Escort Girl, with a vintage, salacious cover to match. Five more bizarro stories, luridly illustrated with good girl art, follow, including Mini Skirts Must Go and Too Fat for Love. Weird Love has been called by far the most jaw-dropping and entertaining comic today. Order this and you'll see why, fanboys and fangirls. From Image Comics, we've got Black Kiss, Triple X Miss in July special one-shot. The Black Kiss 2, Triple X Miss in July special, because nothing says holiday fun like an endless stream of incredibly nasty revenge sex. Next, we have Clone Number 18, How Far Would You Go to Protect Your Family? We've also got East of West number 13, Bulsilis, our first good look inside the lair. The son of death and Zalane make his move. The beast roams free in East of West number 13. Next we have Elephant Men number 58, 
Sahara is ready to give birth to Obadiah Horn's baby. We've also got field number three or four. Our protagonist faces down Christian, the ex-Bible salesman turned hedonist, to find out what's really going on. The smoke eaters square off against the Tomorrow Men for their right to kill our plucky hero. Blood, murder, mayhem, bikers, and cosplayers fighting to the death. Next, we have Hack Slash Son of Samane number one. Your favorite slasher hunter is back when a mysterious cult of monsters arises. Cassie is forced to return to the life she thought she'd left behind. Coupled with a new partner and faced with enemies unlike any she's battled before, Cassie must confront the darkness in the world and in her own life in new ways. The agents of evil never rest. Unfortunately for them, neither does Cassie Hack. We've also got Lazarus number 9, Lift, Part 5. The critically acclaimed series reaches the conclusion of its second arc as Lift's selection begins in Denver, with hundreds of thousands of waste from all over the Carlisle domain desperate for a chance at a better life. Amongst them, the Barrett family reach for their last hope, the resistance seeks to strike a blow, and forever must find a needle in a haystack. Next, we have Madame Frankenstein number 3 of 7. The secret history of the mad scientist and his monster is revealed. Find out what Courtney did to inspire Vincent to steal her dead body and give her new life. Also, we uncover the childhood transgression that had made Henry so determined to expose his former friend. We've also got Morning Glories number 39, Leadership. Next, we have Nailbiter number 3. As the morgue continues to fill with new dead bodies, the citizens of Bucker violently demand that Sheriff Crane and Officer Finch arrest the Nailbiter. But in a town full of killers, anyone could be a suspect. We've also got Protectors Inc. number 7. The Angel and Detective Riley have joined forces to determine who killed the Huntsman and why. With each new discovery, the suspicion grows that it was one of the Protectors who did the job, and that there may be other unsolved murders that could only have been committed by one of their own. In a world without superpowered bad guys, has someone finally crossed over to the other side? And if they have, can they be stopped? And what secret is Protectors Inc. hiding about all this? Tune in for another thrilling adventure. Next, we have Satellite Sam number 9. The clock runs out to save the network from scandal as Michael makes the biggest mistake of his life, and the only friend he has left behind the scenes has to face his father's killer alone. We've also got Sheltered number 10. In the final issue of the second arc, things take a dark turn for the children of Safe Haven. Not all will survive the issue. Next, we have Sidekick number 7. Flyboy has learned the truth. His former partner and mentor, the Red Cow, faked his death, a discovery that has shattered Barry Chase all the way down to his soul. Allied now with Julia Moonglow, he seeks revenge on the man who he revered and deserted him. But before he can pursue vengeance, he has to get past a new hero in town, sent to reel him in for his recent dangerous behavior. How far will Flyboy go to get past this obstacle, and will he ever be the same afterward? We've also got Southern Bastards number 3. Earl Tubbs' one-man war to clean up Crock County begins to rage out of control as it claims its first casualty. Next, we have Tech Jacket number 1, a new ongoing series from the creative team who brought you the hit Tech Jacket digital mini. Zach Thompson, community college dropout, lives with his parents. This is who protects us from what lies beyond our world. But he's also Tech Jacket, the self-styled galactic guardian of Earth. And when a big-ass spaceship enters Earth's orbit, Zack will face the greatest challenge of his life. We've also got Thief of Thieves number 22. The hit list continues as Conrad chooses sides in the cartel mob war and makes a dangerous new ally. And we've got Witchblade number 176. Sarah Pizzini believes her life is returning to normal at least normal for someone who wields an ancient gauntlet of immense supernatural power. But when dark secrets about an abandoned amusement park surface, Sarah's investigation draws her into a living nightmare. From Valiant Entertainment, we've got Quantum and Woody number 12, beaten, bloodied, bamboozled. Quantum and Woody took their battle straight to the enemy. The mad science cabal called Edison radical acquisitions and their mysterious monstrous new leader, and the enemy kicked their ass. When these rogue biologists and roboticists get their hands and roboclaws on their new lab subjects, Quantum and Woody are as good as vivisected, and by vivisected we mean dead. Out in trades this week, we've got Robocop vs. Terminator hardcover. Comics' greatest creators pit the supreme machine killer against the ultimate cybernetic cop in one of the most celebrated crossovers ever. When fate reveals that the technology that built Robocop will lead to the creation of Skynet, Alex Murphy must engage in time-twisting battle against both the murderous computer network and the human resistance fighters out to destroy him. 
Dark Horse is proud to collect for the first time ever Frank Miller and Walter Simonson's classic Robocop vs. The Terminator No. 1-4 through in a newly restored hardcover edition. And we've got Tech Jacket Volume 2 trade paperback. Get ready for the new Tech Jacket ongoing series with this brand new collection featuring the previously digital exclusive Tech Jacket digital miniseries. An intergalactic bounty hunter comes to Earth to claim the ultimate prize, Tech Jacket. Collects Tech Jacket number 7 and 8 and Tech Jacket digital number 1 through 3. Okay, so that's a look at some of our top independent publishers this week, but there's still plenty of other books out as well, so be sure to check out my YouTube channel at he'sgotissues.com to see both the Marvel and DC videos for this week, as well as my usual roundup of all my favorites for the week, with a little more depth and insight than you get here. And if you like these videos, be sure to let me know by leaving a comment and subscribing. You can also follow He's Got Issues on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Tumblr to see everything I'm reading as I read it. So until next week, I'm John Cooney and I've got issues.